that they call it stuff for purposes to take water out of space and put up cameras with it. First, we will talk about the history of the companies. Let's start with Marvel. Known as Timely Comics in 1939, founded by Martin Goodman, Timely's first comic dated October 1939. It featured several characters like the Human Torch, this is not the one from the Fantastic Four, and the Submariner, best known as Namor of Atlantis. Sound kind of familiar, doesn't it? During the Golden Age of Comics in the 1940s, Captain America was introduced in March 1941. These characters were often portrayed as fighting the Nazis and the Japanese even before World War II started. Action Comics also did this with Superman and most of its DC characters. As the 40s ended, Timely Comics cancelled the last of its comics issues of that genre. In the 1950s, Goodman then formed his own distribution company and Timely Comics changed to Atlas Magazines. Then in the late 50s, early 60s, rival company DC Comics revived the superhero genre in the Silver Age of Comics. This is when Atlas changed its names to Marvel Comics. We then skipped to 2009 when Disney bought out Marvel Comics from Goodman. And for several decades, Marvel and DC were the top two companies in the industry. DC. Malcolm Weller Nicholson founded National Allied Publications in 1934. The next year, the company released New Comics New Fun, the first comic that introduced Aquaman and Green Arrow. Weller Nicholson joined the magazine distributors Harry Donofield and Jack Leibowitz and founded Detective Comics in 1937. A few years later, in 1939, Batman was released, known as Detective Comics featuring Batman. We will skip to 1969. Warner Bros. took the opportunity and bought out DC Comics. After this, DC didn't officially have the brand name until 1977. Now, from my understanding, the event comic Crisis on Infinite Earths, released on April 1985, brought a lot of DC heroes into the same universe that weren't a part of it before, like Shazam, or known as Captain Marvel, when he first appeared in Wiz Comics. But over the years after Captain Marvel disappeared, he came back as just Shazam. But his name didn't officially come until 2011, in the new 52 comics that got released. This was just for one of the heroes that had their origin redone by this new 52 comic. Anyway, back to Shazam's name. By now, you would know that Captain Marvel from Marvel Comics shares this name with Shazam, with Shazam having the name when he first appeared back in 1939, and Captain Marvel having the name in 1967. But due to the Marvel trademark, DC could no longer use the Captain Marvel name, and instead called the hero Shazam due to the main character, Billy Batson, calling out this name when he wants to become the hero. Now, we will be looking at the film side of things. Let's start with DC this time. Now, superhero genres were not really popular because people thought it would be stupid to see someone with tights on the big screen. But a man called Alexander Solkin saw interest in a screenwriter named Mario Puzo. He had an idea for a Superman film. This later became Superman the movie. Starring the late Marlon Brando, he played Jor-El, Superman's father, Gene Hackman, Lex Luthor, and the late great Christopher Reeve, who played Clark Kent and Superman, and who all made us believe a man could fly on the Briggs screen. This movie became the highest grossing movie in 1978. Superman 2 also did well at the box office, but when it came time for Superman 3 and Superman 4 The Quest for Peace, both tanked at the box office. Skip to the late 80s where Tim Burton decided to make his own Batman film, starring Jacqueline Nicholson as the Joker and Michael Keaton as Batman. It did really well that a sequel was made a couple years after the release of the first film. But when Warner Bros didn't like the tone Burton was setting for the franchise, so he got replaced by Joel Schumacher, who made the series more family friendly. Batman Forever did well, but after the release of Batman and Robin, things went a bit downhill and superhero films yet again were put on hold for a while. But in 2004, the not very well received Catwoman came out, and audience didn't like it very much. This starred Halle Berry. Then the next year, Batman Begins got released, doing really well in the box office. 
and then got two sequels, The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. Skip to 2011 when Green Lantern was in cinemas. The least said about that film, the better. Then in the year 2013, Zack Snyder released Man of Steel, starring Henry Cavill as Superman. This started off the DCEU. It then continued with Batman v Superman, starring Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, Ben Affleck as Batman, and Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She then went on to do her own solo Wonder Woman film the year later. Suicide Squad then got released with Will Smith as Deadshot, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, and Jared Leto as the Joker. And the not so very well done Justice League. The reason these movies didn't receive well to audiences is because Warner Bros wanted to catch up with the MCU. So instead of introducing each character in their own solo movies, they just introduced them in one whole team up movie. The not so successful Justice League, people really wanted Zack Snyder to finish off his movie. So he then released the Snyder Cut, which ran for four hours. This allowed enough time to introduce individual character we haven't seen before. Like The Flash, Aquaman and Cyborg, these characters were only shown in cameos in Batman v Superman. Let's have a break from DC and talk about Marvel. In the 70s we had The Amazing Spider-Man with The Sound of Music's Nicholas Hamilton in the starring role. This show went from 1977 through 1979. And then The Incredible Hulk came out starring Bill Bixby as David Banner and Lee Fricknell as The Incredible Hulk, going from 1977 through 1982. Skip to the late 90s for the first R-rated Marvel film that came out called Blade. This half vampire, half human goes around night slaying all the vampires in the city. Then comes the year of the X-Men, which did well and set up Hugh Jackman as the infamous Wolverine throughout the franchise. By 2002, Spider-Man got released in cinemas grossing $39.4 million on its first day. This then got two sequels. A lot of people believe that Spider-Man 2 is the best superhero movie or sequel to date. This didn't repeat for the third film coming out in 2007, which it did do better than the first two films, but it didn't receive well to audiences. And in 2008, Kevin Feige, John Favreau and Robert Downey Jr. began the MCU starting it off with Iron Man, paving the way for superheroes. This film was followed by The Incredible Hulk starring Edward Norton, which also came out in 2008, then Iron Man 2 and Thor followed not long after. They then released Captain America the First Avenger, which is set before Iron Man 1. A year after Captain America, we saw the best crossover movie of 2012, The Avengers, bringing all the characters we've seen in their own solo movies. It also brought aboard Black Widow from Iron Man 2, Hawkeye from Thor, and Mark Ruffalo, who replaced Edward Norton as the Incredible Hulk. This movie was the start of more crossovers to come between characters in separate movies. I'm not going to go into depth with all the other Marvel movies because there's a lot of them. But let's go forward to Infinity War. This was the second to last movie to involve the Infinity Stones. This was an interesting movie because the heroes failed to save the world and these movies always end with the hero succeeding in saving it. Then the big event happened, the release of Endgame. This was 10 years in the making with 22 films to count, earning almost 3 million in the box office, becoming the highest grossing movie just passing Avatar. But not long after, Avatar came back on top with Endgame becoming the second highest grossing movie in the box office. So that's Marvel vs DC. Which one do you prefer? And remember, there's no right or wrong answer. Hope you enjoyed this episode and have a great school day.